Hello all, and welcome to another episode of Stuff You Should Know. Um, you are now in 497, which is your capstone. You are completing your experience uh, of your college exploration uh, and your artistic endeavors. Uh, and now what's next? So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about gallery representation, uh, things to do, things not to do, uh, and the different aspects of actually having a gallery. Um, so I am Professor Charles Clary. Uh, I have two galleries that represent me, one in Philadelphia called Paradigm, the other one's in Texas and it's called RO2. Um, having a gallery is a big responsibility uh, and you only want to jump into this pool when you are ready. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the ins and outs of gallery representation, what it means, uh, how to get gallery representation, how to keep gallery representation, and how to use it to your advantage. Um, so the first thing to think about is your digital presence. Uh, I have a very robust Instagram page that also connects to my Facebook page. Um, and you want to make sure that your digital presence is super easy and efficient to find. Um, so when you use your Instagram, make sure that it's your name, art. So mine is Charles Clary, just easy peasy. Uh, or you can, if your name is a very common name, um, you can put your name and then put art at the very end of it. You don't want uh, galleries to try to hunt you down and not be able to find you. Um, so to be able to type in your name into a Google web page, uh, and to be able to find you instantaneously is very advantageous. So, uh, another thing that you'll need to have is a website. Uh, a website is a very great place to kind of, as a compendium for all your information. So your artist resume, your artist bio, your artist statement. Um, and again, that website needs to be super easy to find. Um, it's easier to buy a domain name uh, mine is charlesclary.com. Um, so digital presence is key. Uh, you want a gallery, if they are looking for new clientele, if they're looking for new artists to represent, you want to make it as easy as possible for them to find you. Um, so if you type in my name into Google right now, I'm the first 18 pages that pop up, right? Uh, so that's that's the goal of what you want things to be. Um, it links immediately to my Instagram. It links immediately to my website. So uh, those things are pretty key. Now, I feel like I'm jumping ahead a little bit because with your capstone, you're only doing a piece, maybe a series of two or three pieces. Uh, and that's not enough to get gallery representation. You really need to develop a body of work um, that a gallery can view, digest, and then make a decision on whether they want to represent that body of work. So you don't want to jump into this pool until you're absolutely 100% ready. Um, you know, your foundation work is not going to count towards uh, work that you want to present to a gallery. Uh, your, your explorations, your experiments are not going to be included in the body of work that you want to present to a gallery. You want it to be a solid body of work that you know quite a bit about. Um, so those are questions you need to ask yourself in the very beginning. Are you ready to have gallery representation and the responsibilities that come with gallery representations? Because there are quite a few responsibilities associated with a gallery representing you and you representing that gallery. So, um, so what does it mean to have a gallery? Um, you know, again, it's a big responsibility. Uh, it's a partnership between you and a business, right? Galleries are for profit for the most part, unless you're uh, approaching a pop-up space or a non-for-profit gallery. Um, a gallery is for profit. They're for uh, art collectors to come, peruse work, add to their collection. Um, so you're not only representing yourself, but you're also representing that business as well. Um, so the expectation is that you are going to be able to have a body of work for them to show. Um, 
and you're going to need to be able to explain that work to the gallery director. You're going to need to be able to explain it in an elevator pitch. You're going to be able to explain it in a longer, kind of drawn out artist statement um, to the point where they become as familiar with the work as you are familiar with that work. So when you do uh, approach a gallery, um, it's very important to know something about that gallery, right? Know what their submission process is. Are they taking submissions for the gallery? Uh, you know, are they just looking for group exhibitions? Are they looking for new artists to represent? Um, those are kind of key things. You don't want to just jump in head first and not know anything about the gallery. Submit your things uh, and then you're setting yourself up for failure, essentially. So if uh, you're really interested in a gallery, know what type of work they show. Is it a figurative gallery? Is it an abstract gallery? Is it an unobjective gallery? Is it a uh, conceptual based gallery? What kind of artists do they represent? So if you're an abstractionist uh, and you're submitting to a gallery that represents mostly figurative work, you already wasted your time because that gallery is not going to look at you seriously because they represent a very particular type of work. Um, so know your audience, know, know the gallery in and of itself. Uh, also think about um, location, right? So do you want to present to galleries that are in your local area or do you want to present to galleries that are in California or New York or Philadelphia or Texas? Um, you know, in this area, there are not many galleries um, that you can uh, submit to. So think about location. Uh, are you going to be able to ship work to said gallery? Uh, do they only represent people within their geographical location? Um, you know, you want to develop a partnership with a gallery in and of itself. So other things to think about. Uh, are the contractual obligations associated with the gallery that you submit to. There are three different kind of contracts that galleries usually uh, have with artists. There is a non-exclusive contract, which means it's a one-shot deal. Uh, you show with that gallery either in a group exhibition or a one-time kind of try it out situation. There's no real expectations of the gallery to show you in future dates. There's no expectations of you actually having representation with that gallery. It is essentially a contract that stipulates what are the criteria of the exhibition that you're going to partake in. So usually that means is the gallery going to pay shipping uh, to and from? Uh, what are your responsibilities as the artist? When are the dates that you need to have the work shipped to said gallery? Are you going to be installing the work? Is the gallery going to be installing the work? Usually nowadays uh, you will pay shipping to a gallery, they will pay shipping back. Um, and it splits the load between the two parties involved. Um, it also stipulates if there are sales, what are the commissions. Uh, standard practice on most galleries nowadays is a 50-50 split. Um, so it really kind of comes into play on how to price your work. Uh, which we're not really going to talk about today. Again, this is more about gallery representation. Uh, essentially, an easy rule of thumb is you want to double your material cost uh, or whatever you want to get out of said piece, double that price. So if you want to say, um, you know, I want $200 for this piece in the gallery, it would have to sell for $400. Um, so that's the retail price and the artist price. The retail price is what the client will pay the artist price is what's going to be your cut. Um, so the next type of contract, which is m much more um, standard for most galleries, is a semi-exclusive contract. So that gallery will represent you. There's usually expectations on uh, whether or not you'll have a solo show within a two-year period or if you're going to be included in X amount of group exhibitions. If you are going to have a solo show, what are the expectations of that solo show? Um, and generally when you sign a semi-exclusive contract, you are obligated to only sell with that gallery within a 150 to a 250 mile radius. 
that means there are no there's a non competition clause within that kind of geographical area, right? So you can't show with another gallery within that radius of the other gallery, which makes complete sense because you don't want to stoke competition competition between two galleries that are geographically close to one another, right? So if you have an East Coast gallery, you may not want to have another East Coast gallery, right? So in ideal situations, you can have multiple galleries, but you have one on the East Coast and you have one on the West Coast, or you have one on the East Coast and you have one in the central part of the U.S. That way, they're not competing with one another. They have their own clientele base, um, and you keep everything cordial. Uh, Semi-exclusive contracts is what I have with both my galleries. Um, you know, I would never kind of, you don't, you want to understand those contracts in and of themselves. Um, but you, again, this is a partnership between you and the gallery and you want to keep that business relationship solid. So, uh, another thing to think about is you don't want to price your work differently in different geographical locations because then you're setting yourself up again for conflict and you're setting yourself up for failure, right? So whatever our price is on an East Coast gallery, it's going to be the same thing on a West Coast gallery. Um, but again, I'm jumping ahead. You know, we're trying to focus on getting in a gallery, not two or three galleries, right? So let's take it baby steps at a time. Uh, the other type of contract, and this is usually reserved for blue chip galleries or the huge name galleries that represent artists that you've seen in art history books or artists that you pretty much look up to. Um, they're known as blue chip galleries and they have exclusive contracts. So you, the exclusivity is primarily and solely with the gallery that you sign with. Uh, it makes complete sense when you're working with like a Mary Boone or a Pace Gallery uh, or, you know, any big name, like a Gagosian gallery, um, because they're going to have the worldwide market, uh, and expertise to be able to promote your work to a huge audience. Um, and at that point you're talking about artistic prices going into the five, six figure range. Um, so it makes sense in that regards, right? You don't want to have a Gagosian gallery in New York and then have another gallery in LA. Um, now some artists do, and that's completely fine. Uh, but usually you want to avoid exclusivity contracts, uh, because they have the sole proprietorship of that. And it really can limit you on how you can show when you can show, uh, and how often you can show. So, uh, another thing to think about, again, is the commissions that we're talking about. Uh, it is in, it's going to be stated within whatever contract that you sign. Uh, and I may want to make sure that there is a contract associated with you and a gallery space, right? It sets everything out clear, concise. You know what your expectations are. You know what the expectations of the gallery are. So, um, read a contract thoroughly. Um, you want to make sure that you're not surprised by anything. I've, I've, I've made that mistake in the past. I had a gallery in New York, um, and that relationship fell through, uh, not amicably. Uh, it fell through pretty, uh, pretty roughly, essentially. Uh, and because I didn't necessarily read the contract as thoroughly as I should, realized that I was responsible for all shipping costs, regardless if it was going to the gallery or coming home from the gallery. Um, so it burnt me in the end. I came up with uh, unexpected $1,000 to $2,000 shipping costs to get my work back from the gallery after everything kind of fell through. Uh, so make sure you know what you're getting into uh, with that. Um, another thing I get asked quite a bit is how do you approach a gallery uh, and that is where self-confidence comes into play that comes uh, your research of said gallery comes into play um, and how serious you are about having gallery representation so generally you want to show with a gallery that's in your location right um, so if there is a gallery that you 
are aspiring to show with, what I recommend is go to their openings on a consistent basis. Make your face known. Uh, don't, the very first time that you show up to the gallery, don't try to push your work onto the gallery uh, or ask, are you taking submissions? I think that is a pitfall and it's, it, it's I don't wanna say it, it seems desperate, uh, but it can come across that way and that the only reason that you're interested in the said gallery is what they can do for you. Uh, so go to the gallery openings, uh, enjoy the work, start to engage with uh, people that go to those openings and go on a consistent basis because the more that your face is shown, the more people will go, huh, I've seen this person before. Uh, I might introduce myself to said person and then a conversation can start. Uh, nowadays, um, well, back when I was going through grad school, to approach a gallery, you would either bring your portfolio in, have a slide sheet of the images of your work, or show up to a portfolio day. Nowadays, it is pretty much all digital submissions. Uh, so if you go to a gallery website uh, and click on a link, It'll show you the artists that they represent, artists they have represented in the past. Um, if they have a blog, they'll have a link to the blog. Um, if they have press releases, which they will have, uh, there's a link to that. And then there might be a link to say that has contact information. Within that contact information will be submissions and submission guidelines. It'll tell you whether or not the gallery is taking submissions if they have suspended submissions, and exactly what they're looking for with those submissions. Uh, and it's extremely important to follow their guidelines. If it says 200 word bio, 400 word artist statements, a link to your website, what Im or how many images to submit, and what size those images should be, and the format of, titling those images, you follow those things to a T. Uh, if you do not follow those things to a T, your submission will be instantaneously thrown out and then you won't know that because they're not gonna tell you that. They're just gonna look at that submission, say they can't follow guidelines and you're instantly out, right? So follow what their prescribed uh, submission policy is. Um, and once that's done, don't follow up with a ton of emails, right? They will contact you, you don't contact them, right? That could take anywhere between 72 hours up to two weeks or longer, or you may not hear anything back, right? Because they don't have the time to respond to every single person. So uh, when you submit your portfolio, make sure it's super tight, super clean uh, and easily digestible, right? Um, and usually within the email that you send, it is common courtesy to introduce yourself. So, hi, my name is Charles Clary. Uh, I am a paper artist that is currently living and working in South Carolina. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to my new body of work titled Memento Mori Diddle that addresses trauma, loss, and mourning. Here's a link to my website. Uh, thank you so much for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Don't get into a long-winded email about the, you know, the in-depth analysis of your work um, because at some point they'll just stop reading it and then chunk it out, right? Because they want easy, digestible, professional emails. So, um, so essentially that's, that's how you nowadays approach a gallery. So you have to have a really good website. Uh, I would say you need really good digital presence. Uh, and what we talk about with digital presence, uh, again, is to make sure that you are easy to find. Um, so Instagram has now become, you know, a big marketing tool. Um, again, title your Instagram page, your name or your name art, uh, and only post images of your work or processes of your work uh, or um, 
instructional videos of how you make your work. Don't let it become clogged down or bogged down with personal photos of you and your dog or you on vacation or inappropriate things. You want that site to be solely for your art. Now you can have another Instagram that's totally associated with your personal life and all that kind of stuff, uh, but make sure your professional Instagram page is solely devoted and only devoted to your work. That way, if someone is looking for artists and they stumble upon your Instagram page, they don't have to go searching for your work, right? Uh, within Instagram, uh, when you make a post, you can also activate it to where it posts to Instagram or Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all the other kind of sites that you use in social media. Uh, you can post to one and it posts to all. That's what I do. I think it's much easier. You don't have to keep up with everything. Um, you can just do it all from one location. Uh, make sure your websites are super slick, super clean. Uh, segmented into the about page so what it says about your artist statement your bio how you make the work and then uh, the artwork section uh, you can subdivide that into if you're a multidisciplinary artist and you do drawings you do paintings you do sculptures you can break it down into subcategories of that work uh, a contact page like how to get a hold of you um, and again, link it to an email that is not like fluffykitty number 22 at gmail.com. That is unprofessional. Make a separate Gmail account that is for your professional uh, mystique, I guess. Um, so again, keep everything professional, keep everything easy, super easy to find. Uh, I have mine linked to my Gmail that's charlesclaryart at gmail.com. Uh, my Instagram is Charles Clary. My Facebook page is Charles Richard Clary. Uh, my Twitter is Charles Clary. <laughs> so again, it's easy to find. Uh, and I recommend post. Post often, right? Because the more you post, the more that you can be seen. Um, so my experiences with galleries has been a mixed bag. Uh, I have two really great galleries right now. Uh, that represent my work um, and they are two of the best that I've ever worked with. Um, so my gallery in Philadelphia is called Paradigm Gallery. So here's my show, Be Kind Rewind, that deals with nostalgia, pop culture, it deals with childhood trauma, it deals with uh, various topics of survival. Um, so this is how it's represented at the gallery. Um, there were a thousand pieces in this exhibition, so a thousand photographs, a thousand pieces up on the sales site. Um, the gallery did something really interesting to where they used a program called Matterport um, that allows uh, 3D uh, screening of the space itself. So due to COVID, you were able to actually digitally preview the gallery space in a really interesting digital component, um, and you could theoretically physically be there, but through the lens of digital media. Um, and this is how a gallery should shut, set up an exhibition. Uh, they use Matterpoint, which is a digital uh, program that can walk you through a, a space digitally. Um, uh, especially with the COVID um, pandemic that's going on right now. Um, the gallery was very inventive in how they still had exhibitions, how they still had openings, how the community could engage with the artist's work through a digital lens. Um, my other gallery is RO2. Um, they're in Texas. Um, they have been really great about taking me to art fairs, uh, which is a whole nother subgenre of showing work. Uh, a good gallery will go to art fairs. Uh, the big one is Art Basel uh, or the Armory Fair in New York. Art Basel is in Miami. Uh, and it's an opportunity to showcase your work to a worldwide audience, right? They become like art markets, uh, essentially. So the gallery rents out a booth, uh, people fly in from all over the country. Uh, and it's a way that you can see 
150, 200 different galleries all at once. Um, and it really is kind of the pinnacle of showing with a gallery. Um, so bad experiences I've had, um, you know, I worked with a gallery in Nashville, I'm not going to like say names, um, that did not have my best interests at heart. Showed me in solo exhibitions, showed me in group exhibitions, but when it came to storing the work, protecting the work, um, they were very lackluster. Uh, a lot of pieces got damaged. Uh, there were sales that were made where commissions were not distributed uh, or records were not kept. So the work just disappeared and no monetary exchange happened. Um, and at some point you have to make a decision, a conscious decision, whether or not you want to continue a relationship with a gallery like that. Um, you know, my best advice, if you ever run into those type of situations, is to try to amicably dissolve the relationship, right? Don't go on Instagram or Facebook and start trashing the gallery, because even if you leave that gallery, at some point in time, there may be an opportunity that pops up uh, that, you know, there might be a commission or... Um, you may be able to work with someone who knows the people that work with that gallery or the people that worked at that gallery may know somebody who's interested in your work and gives you a referral. Um, so always end any kind of relationship amicably. Don't burn your bridges. Um, don't get into tit for tat kind of arguments over digital means. Uh, it's just never going to serve you well and it's not going to be professional at all. Uh, I had another gallery in New York um, where they wanted to make all decisions in regards to what work was shown, what work was not shown. Um, they wanted to control the prices of the work, uh, which is more of a discussion that should happen, not a dictate that comes down, right? So when you price your work, you really want to have a conversation with your gallery to say, what is the best price point for this work? You know your clientele better than I do. Like, where, where is, is, where can we find a happy medium, essentially? Um, but overall, my experiences have been very good. Uh, the gallery I work with in Philadelphia, which is my primary gallery, um, I pay for shipping to the gallery. They pay shipping back, um, you know, so the contract that uh, we entered into for the solo show, Be Kind of Rewind, um, the, they cover all the cost of promotional material. You know, they pay the rent on the space, they pay the electricity, they pay the water. Um, they paid for the posters that were made, they paid for the show cards that were made. Um, they did everything associated with the website. Um, I was responsible for taking photos of all the work, uh, which they offered to do, uh, but it was easier for me to go ahead and do that. Um, and I drove the work up, I installed the work, and that was part of our agreement. Um, again, they could have done that, but I thought it's better since I'm more of an installation artist to be able to do that myself. Um, and they have the clientele lists. They have um, the emails of all their previous collectors um, that they send all that information out to. They did all the digital uh, 3D rendering of the gallery space once everything was done. They put on a Zoom um, meeting for the digital opening where it became an artist talk. Uh, they were responsible for all that. Uh, within the contract, they keep the work for six months. Um, so they still get any commission that's associated with any sale of the work over that six month period. Um, I retain the copyright to the images of the work, but they're allowed to use said imagery. Um, again, it states what the 50% 50 50 50 commission rate is. Um, there are a few galleries that will do a 60-40 split, but those are so few and far between that you shouldn't expect that. Um, it's, it's pretty standard. Over Overall, 50-50 cut is, is what it is. Um, 
and they've just been fantastic. They've taken me to several art fairs uh, um, and has done really well with my work. Um, they're completely okay with me doing multiple different bodies of work. Uh, and it's a wonderful relationship. It's what you want to have in a gallery. Um, you know, when we're talking about galleries, professionalism is key. Uh, present yourself as a potential source of income for that gallery. I know that sounds weird, right? But again, this is a partnership. This is a relationship. You're dating them as much as they're dating you. Um, so you want to be happy with the space. Uh, again, when you're submitting your work, um, don't be pushy about it, right? That I mean, it's going to kind of come off as you're very needy, um, that you are only in it for like what they can give you, not what you can give them. Um, so make sure professionalism is key. Um, you know, branding yourself, I think, is extremely important, uh, especially, like, branding and marketing yourself is extremely important when you start or when you are ready to start submitting to galleries, right? You are your own marketer. Um, you do all the Instagram. You do all the Facebook. You do all the promotion of yourself. Um, and that's kind of key, right? Uh, the more you know about your work, the less wishy-washy you are about your work, uh, the better that you can present your work for possible inclusion as a stable artist with a gallery. And what does a stable artist mean? That means that you are represented by that gallery and that there are expectations within that relationship. Say you have a solo show every two years. You're included in group exhibitions uh, once or twice a year. Um, you know, there are benefits of being a stable artist. Um, so it is not easy. I want to make that very clear. Um, it's very difficult to get gallery representation. Usually gallery representation will come from you being included in a group exhibition. That's how I got my representation with Paradigm Gallery in Philadelphia. Um, they saw my work on Instagram. Uh, were really kind of taken with it, offered me uh, a spot in a group exhibition. Um, that group exhibition happened, uh, and then they announced, and, and the work sold, uh, which is, you know, important. Um, and it's, it's a way for the gallery to take, take a risk with showing you, but not take a huge risk, right? Because if you're in a group show, there may be 20 other artists in that exhibition and it's such a minimal risk to include you in that show that it's an easy kind of decision. Uh, but that led to my first art fair. Uh, I followed up with them and said, Hey, yeah, I hear you going to art on paper. Where are you, you know, are you considering taking my work? And they were like, Oh, that's a fantastic idea. Why didn't we think about that? Uh, and it turned into a really successful um, jaunt at Art on Paper. Um, and then that developed into the relationship that we're in now. Uh, and it just kind of grows organically if you let it, right? Uh, so just a recap, right? So make sure you have a body of work, right? To be able to present to a gallery space. If it's a singular piece, if it's a couple of pieces, a gallery is not going to waste their time on you. Right, because they want someone who is as committed to this, this business as they are. Uh, professionalism. Make sure that you are on point in every aspect that you possibly can. Website, clean, efficient, easy to navigate, no crazy name. Instagram, uh, active, again, associated with your name or your name art. Um, and you're posting on a regular basis. I am a little overboard when I do my, I do one every day. Uh, and it is a little consuming, all consuming, um, but it has beneficial, it's worked for me, right? Every other day, every two to three days, I think is completely fine, but make sure that you're constantly putting yourself there, out there on a digital platform. 
Uh, Twitter is another good place to go. I don't use it just because I it's too much. Um, but for those of you who are well versed in Twitter, use it to your advantage. Um, make sure that um, you present yourself in a professional manner, uh, that you're not pushy, um, and you're prepared for this type of lifestyle, right? Uh, the best, the best, the best advice I ever got was from a grad school professor who said, always have enough work to be able to show in two solo exhibitions. And I've kept that mantra throughout my entire professional career. I have enough work at any point in time to have two or three solo exhibitions and also have enough work to be in group exhibitions. Uh, so I have two solo shows up right now and I still have a ton of work that I can submit to other opportunities. So my exclusive contract is probably best, uh, or at least that's what I've found uh, in my professional career. Uh, read over the contracts you know, thoroughly to make sure you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, make sure that you can talk about your work both in an elevator pitch and more of an in-depth conversation. That way the gallery can know more about your work and be able to promote your work the way that you want it to be promoted. Uh, and be patient, right? It takes time. You're not, you're not going to get a gallery right off the bat, right? Um, the gallery world owes you nothing. Um, I know that sounds super harsh, uh, but at the same time, the galleries have been around for a long time, right? And they are looking for individuals that are going to promote their brand, promote their business, right? Because in the end, it is a business. Um, and that's going to advance their ideology around how they present artwork. Um, it just takes time. Uh, be patient. Be okay with rejections. You're going to get a lot of them. For every yes, you may get 20 to 50 no's, right? Don't take it personally. Uh, don't let it get you off track. Use it as fuel to keep pushing forward, right? Uh, so that's my rundown of galleries, uh, how to think about a gallery, how to get into a gallery, how to submit to a gallery. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me at cclarity or cclary at coastal.edu. Follow me on Instagram at Charles Clary. Uh, you can check out my website, uh, charlesclary.com. Um, and uh, hopefully this has been a beneficial conversation. Enjoy the rest of your capstone, and if you need anything, let me know.